What if nothing around you is real? What if your thoughts, your memories, your sense of self, all of it, were just part of an incredibly advanced computer program? It sounds like a sci-fi movie, right? Like The Matrix or some late-night conspiracy theory. But here's the twist. Some of the world's most respected scientists, including Oxford philosophers, astrophysicists, even tech billionaires, believe there's a real possibility that we are living in a simulation. Yes, a simulation, as in this universe, your body, this voice you're hearing, it might all be code. And the most unsettling part? We may never know for sure. Let's break this down. The idea of a simulated reality isn't new. Philosophers have been playing with it for centuries. But the modern simulation hypothesis was made famous in 2003 by philosopher Nick Bostrom from the University of Oxford. His argument goes like this. Imagine a future civilization, much more advanced than us with access to insane computing power. If they were curious about their past, they could run simulations of their ancestors, millions of them, entire virtual worlds with conscious digital beings inside, just like us. Now here's the kicker. If this kind of simulation is possible and if advanced civilizations are likely to create them, then statistically, it's more likely we're in one of those simulations than in the one real base universe. In simple terms, the real world could be one in billions, and we're probably not in it. Let that sink in for a second. You watching this video, your room, your phone, your memories, your parents, the stars in the sky, all possibly just data, ones and zeros, rendered on demand. And it's not just Bostrom. Astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson once said there's a better than 50-50 chance we're in a simulation. Elon Musk, he's even bolder. He claims the odds we're in base reality are one in billions. This isn't a fringe idea anymore, and it's being seriously debated in scientific and philosophical circles. So why does it feel so strange to talk about? Because it breaks everything we believe about existence, about purpose, about consciousness. If this is all fake, then what does that mean for free will, for love, for death, for the meaning of anything? The simulation hypothesis messes with our most fundamental ideas, and that's exactly why it's so compelling and so terrifying. But is there any actual evidence for it? Or is it just clever philosophy in a sci-fi wrapper? Let's start with something basic, math. The universe seems to be governed by mathematical laws. At the most fundamental level in particles, forces, space-time, everything behaves according to equations. There's symmetry, consistency, logic, almost like code. In fact, some physicists argue that the structure of the universe resembles a computer program. Theoretical physicist James Gates even discovered error-correcting codes, the same kind used in computer software, embedded in string theory equations. Coincidence or a signature? Then there's the limits of reality. The speed of light, for example, acts like a universal speed cap, almost as if we're inside a system with performance constraints. Quantum mechanics shows that particles behave differently when observed, as if the system renders reality only when someone's watching. Sound familiar? That's how video games work. Why waste resources simulating parts of the world no one's looking at? Some researchers have even proposed experimental tests to detect pixelation in space, trying to find out if space-time itself has a resolution, like pixels on a screen. Now, let's flip it. What if we aren't in a simulation? Then we must eventually reach a level of civilization where we can run realistic ancestor simulations ourselves. And if we do, even just once, we create the same problem. We add more simulated worlds to the total pool. It's like recursion. Every real world spawns billions of fake ones. And so the odds keep stacking against us being in base reality. The only way to avoid the conclusion is if no civilization ever gets advanced enough to run simulations. Or if they all choose not to. But think about us. Even now, we simulate weather, economies, the human brain. What happens when our computers are powerful enough to simulate consciousness itself? Okay, deep breath. If your head is spinning, you're not alone. The simulation hypothesis can feel overwhelming, but here's the part where things calm down a bit. First, even if we are in a simulation, it doesn't make your experiences any less real to you. Your emotions, your thoughts, your choices, they're still yours. Think about a dream. It's not real in the physical sense, but you feel things. Reality is what you experience, not just what's made of atoms. Second, whether simulated or not, the universe we live in behaves consistently. Physics works. The laws of nature hold, stars burn, planets spin, life evolves. If it's a simulation, it's really good. And maybe that doesn't need to scare us. Maybe it should inspire us, because if someone or something built all this, 
They went to incredible lengths to make it beautiful, complex, rich with meaning, and we get to be part of it. And finally, even if this is just code, it means we're part of something vast and intelligent, not insignificant, not random. Maybe just maybe that makes us more important, not less. So are we living in a simulation? The truth is, no one knows. Maybe we never will. But asking the question might be just as important as answering it. Because the more we challenge our assumptions, the closer we get to understanding what reality truly is. Simulated or not. And if this is all just a program, then whoever wrote it. They gave us curiosity, wonder, a thirst to explore. And that, simulated or not, is as real as it gets.